Hi, my name is Daniel Vasquez. I'm an owner and managing partner of Ophir Financial. Ophir is spelled O-P-H-I-R. The company's focus is to help individuals and families build their financial stability and continue on building their wealth. In this presentation, we're going to talk about the concepts of financial planning and wealth building. We're also going to present or talk about the steps of information gathering and how we help our agents and help our clients identify the financial stability that and how we go about building it. Now, next slide, we're going to talk about the basic fundamentals of the financial planning and the wealth building process. As you can see in the presentation down in the bottom in the green block, we have a couple things listed there. One is assets, uh, income stream, and life insurance, property. And um, in this block, we're trying to represent the things that you may, from the start of your working years to the end of the working years, invest in or put your money into, and then that develops uh, value. And the objective of obtaining that up front is so we can start measuring all the way up to the uh, end of your working years and determine from the, the start to the beginning whether or not you have enough financial capacity to actually create the income and the lifestyle that you had during your working years. That is determined by all the assets that you may accumulate, the savings dollars that you have, the increased income that you have. And that line that I show there in yellow is a line of increase, if you will. Now, one of the foundation and the components that we have to focus on in the beginning is one is your income function. Um, we first have to identify what that income actually is, that revenue stream. On a business side, you would call it the revenue stream. In a family side, it's basically your income that you're bringing into the family. Now, that income, we kind of take a look at as to where you are in the income process. That is identified primarily that this is the uh, career that you've decided to go into. You've had some education and background behind that, and that starts to stabilize the idea that this is generally the kind of income that you're going to receive. We also have to take a look at other areas, um, such as uh, you may be interested in purchasing or getting into a business at that point. So we need to take in consideration that income flow from point A to point B. In that income, one of the blocks that we're showing there in pink is the operational budget. Just like any other business, the family is the same. They have a particular operating budget that they have to function on, knowing very well that they have to get from the day to day to the year to year. Same in a family. The family has to consider, here's what we need to function, including things that are nice things for you, like uh, vacations, those types of things. There are some things in the budget right in the beginning that you will be purchasing that we're finding ways down the road of how to actually take that money that you pool together and use that and leverage that instead of giving that away to somebody else. Um, in other words, because you bought an automobile, you basically give them the money. Opposed to keeping it into your pooling process, you borrow it from yourself, you give it back to yourself, simply put. So those are things we're going to talk about in this presentation a little bit down the road, in general terms, of course. Um, one of the other key elements in that we have to consider in this process is the not just your income, is also your operational budget, but then what is the remainder, if there is any remainder, as far as the savings, create a savings concept right from the get-go to say, here's what we can do right at this point. As we build, we can increase that saving dollars. 
not excluding the fact that you might want to purchase a larger home and that kind of stuff. We have to put that in the plan. But there should be a savings base that you've come to um, just to start the idea that at the end of your working years, you now have enough money to actually retire at that point or continue on uh, working as well. So now, in the next thing I show you up here is just primarily at the top of that, that increase line, which is the end of your working years. And one of the things we need to consider in this entire process is liquidity. When you take those things that are down at the bottom left, which are your assets, your income stream, uh, your properties, uh, and other things you may have accumulated as assets in that working, on, during those working years, those things need to be liquid enough so where we can transfer those into something that will give you an income after those working years for the retirement process. So we're using this process and other things in between to actually start that wealth building concept that we talk about. Now, what came into the screen is a little red button. That red button indicates something that's pretty much the core of this process that we're talking about. And that's financial instruments that increase wealth. There needs to be uh, an instrument that can continually create wealth for you on an even basis and fairly guaranteed basis opposed to taking a high risk. Um, those things are fine once we get this foundation actually built. That instrument is something that we're going to talk about in the next few slides. But just to give you an idea of what happens with the assets that you receive, and one of the most important assets is that first green button that I show on the screen, is your family income. That family income is an asset. We look at it very similar in a business environment. That business environment of sales and revenue stream is a, is a major asset in that business. When that revenue stream goes away, the business suffers a great deal. That's the same thing in a family. And we learn how to protect that, that income stream. And that's one of the things that we will do. And that's why I pointed out that financial instrument needs to help in that area. Um, now, there are other things that you accumulate. One is your first home, the, the mortgage behind it. Those things have value. The, the, the first home has a great deal of opportunity to help you leverage that uh, uh, equity that you may have so you can start building the functional process of getting all the way up to your end of your working years. Now, as we continue, there are other things that, that transpire just to give you some examples of what we mean by the assets and how you accumulate them. Some people will get into the second income property, uh, whether it's for income or equity. They purchase that, that uh, second property and they use and leverage that property to actually build wealth. And we're going to show you how to do that. There's qualified programs that individuals have acquired in this process of that increase years. And that is the qualified programs, which are like your 401ks, your IRAs, and Roth type of programs. They're government oriented. They're primarily designed for um, retirement, but they do have some limits as to what you can put the quantity that you can put into those programs per year, which is fine. Individuals have those and it's something that if they do have them and they're in this process that we need to take a look at them and to see what the liquidity is and what the burdens may be on that liquidity. So. There are other assets like metals, stocks, and, and um, even as I mentioned earlier in this line, is that some company or some clients have thought about the idea of moving into a business. So they start to invest in that, that business. 
and we take a look at it as an asset or a deterrent in some cases, but an asset. So what we're representing here are things that happen during the working years and the things that we, that we purchase. And what we want to do with the wealth building process is to, do, to take tools that can measure where you started and where you're going to end up. In the beginning, you might not see enough in those end of those working years. So that's the objective, is once we have a perspective of what you have from point A to point B, and we calculate it out, we use a, a, a calculations by wealth building cornerstones. They have the calculator that allows us to do that. And if things change, we recalculate to determine where you're going to end up. That's an important part of this process, is making sure that we know what that number is at the end of your working years and beyond. Now, in this slide I, I show on the right uh, the programs, just to give you an idea of what we are starting to build for families, just to understand here's how we get them to their end of their working years properly and with proper strength in their financial position. Um, protect the most important asset. We kind of mentioned this, is that's your family income. We have licensed into insurance carriers right now that allow us to protect you or protect that income in a number of ways. We protect that in, by, let's say, disability uh, income uh, um, programs. Uh, as well as just the idea of pooling money into your accounting process, your financial instruments may give you enough to take care of that income loss right in that short period of time. So there are ways to start covering the loss of income, the loss of, of uh, um, ability to work, those kind of things. The other is the mortgage financing. Uh, for your first home. Uh, a lot of people purchase that first home. They know it's one of the largest debts that they have, but at the same time has a tremendous amount of power and equity um, and value. And not all families know how to take advantage of that since it's really a high yield um, uh, property or asset. And it can be collateralized properly, the key word is properly, so you can start continually building that wealth process. The other things is mortgage and leverage second income property. Same type of thing, but that income property is not just income coming in, it also is gaining in equity, gaining in value at this point. Some of those properties are kept for maybe a lifetime, or they're sold and then repurchased another property down the road. The objective is to keep track of that value, use that value or that cash that's coming in into programs that continually increase your wealth. We'll talk about other types of uh, investments that you can make down the road once this foundation is being built at that point. A little higher risk, but higher yield within uh, per shorter periods of time. Now, at this point, we're going to talk about the end of that period of the end of your working years and what we're thinking about just very quickly. If you remember right, we accumulated those assets over the years, or you have, uh, the assets, the income stream, uh, life insurance, the properties, all the other assets you have. One of the things that we need to consider at the end of the working years is one, what kind of income stream are we able to create out of those assets? And what we're going to do as far as liquidity and le the legacy. The green dot that I put into this red line there is just an idea of a tool that we can use 
to take the cash position of your assets, move it into annuities to create that income. That income and annuity should be designed to take care of your income even past your living years if necessary. There, sometimes we have uh, agencies that put annuities out there, but after someone passes away and there's still a balance there, that that balance is, is uh, eliminated and the family doesn't have the opportunity to use it. So it's important to find the right annuity for the right objectives. And there may be a couple different ones that are necessary to say, here's your income function in the retirement process. Now, in this next slide, we're just kind of doing a quick review. Again, the objective is that increase line. You start putting your assets there. We start recording the idea of what is it you have as far as your potential getting up to your end of your working years at the numbers that you think you need at that time. Now, the next we're going to focus on, as you can see up in the top caption there, it's keeping more of your money during your working years. This is something that, that we see financial planners thinking about and trying to help companies do. We consider that part of the, the general process of moving from that starting point to the end point. But in this presentation, I'm going to take some of these blocks out just to show you and focus on the right arrow here. <laughs> there should be an arrow coming up right there. You notice I I put in their financial instruments in to increase wealth. One of the things that we started, though we're in the mortgage business, we started to realize because of that, that we needed a way to help families retain those assets, especially the property asset. And we wanted a safe way, a secure way to create an increase in that interest gain. So we found three carriers in the insurance side that we felt worked very efficiently for this objective. Now, in a whole life policy, which is the WH uh, life policy, there are premiums that you were put in. We consider those what we call opportunity expense management uh, um, tools. In other words, you're taking money and you're putting it in someplace to actually create more interest rate. We see that as opportunity expense. Yes, you're taking it out of your savings dollars, but it's an opportunity to create more dollars. We call those opportunity expenses that happen all the way through that increase line. We need to find opportunities to pool money in so we can use it for other investments and use it for even purchases. So in our particular case, as I mentioned, we had three carriers that we decided decided on with the whole life policy. We have other carriers that have term that we can help uh, families with, uh, et cetera. But the reason we focused on those three is that there were mutual companies. What that means is that they, a policy holder like yourself, actually has ownership in the company, in a mutual company. Now, what happens in that particular case, that organization, that carrier creates profit. Those profits are then distributed into the policy owners, which are also owners in the company. Therefore, they receive a dividend. So there are two things that you are pooling together to create increase, not just cash value in the whole life policy, but also at the end of the year, profits known as dividends. And those dividends are put back into your policy. 
therefore it's put back into your cash account, if you will, and we use that to compound the interest. So one of the things I, I kind of represent in that little picture there is using a bank concept. We're using a banking concept. What I mean by that is that a bank, you basically deposit money in, then you withdraw money in uh, for your operational side. You also save money in a bank for longer periods of terms. You also invest in that bank and you invest in some of the services that they provide like CVs or bonds, those types of things or other instruments. In addition, you can borrow from that bank. You can borrow money from that bank as long as you pay it back. The borrowing from a bank is, is something to consider that one, it's not necessarily your money. In this concept that we're, we're talking about here, we want to be able to save more of your money. So we're building this pool of, of money that you can borrow from, that one, you can deposit into, it's liquid enough for you to take it out if for some reason you have to. Um, and on top of it, it's your own investment. It is an investment tool because it increases in dividends and cash value throughout that increase line, as we show there. There's, we call the insurance companies carriers, or I have been. Those carriers allow you to do something that's really important, and that's to borrow at a low rate that, and at the cash value and the dividend increase that you have created. So we separate those two things because you're borrowing money from the carrier, the insurance company, not from your policy because your policy continues to grow and we want it to continue to grow. So what you do is that you borrow money, as for an example, let's suppose at the end of a, a particular period of 51 years of age, you now have children that are um, have gone to school and they've created a um, educational debt that is uh, pretty heavy, if you will. And normally what tries what happens is one, the child, child, the young adult tries to start paying that debt off at this point, but starts their family in that fashion. And that's a tough nut to crack for no better phrases. But in this particular case, if we pulled enough money at this point, instead of giving the government X amount of dollars or the bank X amount of dollars that you'll never get a chance to use again, what you do is you take it out of the pool of money that you've created in this self-bank system into your retirement program and you pull that out because you can borrow on it. You pay that loan off for the family and one, you actually start making your own payments. Instead of the young man making a payment or he can make a payment, into your bank's process, or you can put it back into your own bank process. So the objective is you're now paying back yourself because the tool, the life policy is still growing. So as you pay it back, you're maintaining that balance that you want to maintain the, the interest rate uh, retention. So this is, a generalization of that program. We or I also do presentations if, if our client is interested in more detail is through worksheets and etc to present how that actually would work at their level of savings dollars or their their whole life policy. So we have those tools available to show you that. Now It's really about the idea of summarizing what we're about and what we're trying to accomplish. 
keep in mind that Osphere Financial one is focused on the client starting years to the end of the working years and you see the blue arrow pointing to the right means that it's a continuation. In closing, there's four things that we try to accomplish. One, help you plan, help you protect your assets properly, keyword is properly, and increase the wealth that you're gaining through this system. In addition, is help you manage that process. One of the things that we have found is that individuals that get involved in this process, they need help in managing that process. And Osphere Financial is here to help in a number of ways. We also have organizations outside of Osphere that can help you with debt management if need be. Just to give you an example of what we're about. So in closing, I would like to say that in our objective, we realistically want to help families get from point A to point B. We have a website that you can get a hold of or get through to us if you have any particular questions, whether you're a client or you're not a client, that have a question about helping you build your finances or if you're creating a debt that is a struggle for you, please let us know. If you have individuals that are friends of yours or clients of yours, or et cetera, that are struggling to, to save money and get through this, we would love to hear from them. So please, in closing, be good to yourselves, take care of yourselves, and when you can, let us help you. Thank you so much for listening.